This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the collective break in the Camo 50 for DCS World. If we press right shift P to see the collective by removing the pilot, you can see the lever on the lower side of it. This is the collective brake. It would need to be depressed in order to move the cyclic, although in DCS this is not the case, but its other function is to assign a new altitude while the altitude hold stabilizer is engaged. Engaging the altitude hold stabilizer, we're able to see it's currently in radar altitude hold, as determined by the switch next to it, which can cycle between barometric or radar altimeter hold. In this example, I'll trim into a side slip, and we'll be able to observe on the vertical velocity indicator that my vertical speed is in a state of climb. To combat this, I'll engage the altitude hold stabilizer, which will hold me at the altitude that I was at when I engaged the stabilizer. We'll do so within 20% authority, as the autopilot system can only hold 20% control over the aircraft, allowing us to override it simply by moving the collective or the cyclic as needed. As I cancel out the side slip and trim into a leftwards direction, we're able to see as the altitude stabilizer is holding the altitude with a reasonable degree of accuracy. At this point, if we wish to change the altitude that's currently being held, we can depress the collective brake, lower the collective or raise the collective as needed. In this example, I'm lowering my altitude, so I'll lower the collective. Then I'll zero out my vertical speed, release the collective, and this will assign the new altitude for the altitude hold stabilizer to hold. In the next example, we'll get to see the use of the collective brake in conjunction with the altitude hold stabilizer at higher speeds. In this next example, I'm going to depress the collective brake, bank around to the left in a state of climb, at which point I'm going to level out my vertical speed, release the collective brake to assign a new altitude that the altitude hold stabilizer is going to hold, and then at which point I'm going to trim into the town in a state of side slip so I could keep eyes on the town if I needed to go heads down or fire a missile into it. So far in this example, as well as the last example, we've been flying over relatively flat terrain where the radar altitude hold stabilizer will be able to hold the altitude quite accurately. But if we were to be flying over a densely populated city or some other area with a lot of obstacles underneath us that differ in height between the ground around it, we may choose to engage the barometric hold instead of the radar altimeter hold, as it will hold our altitude depending on the air pressure around us rather than the radar altitude below us. In this final example, I'm going again at a fairly high airspeed, and I will be assigning a new altitude to set my altitude slightly higher than most of the obstacles that are in the city that I'll be flying over. And the city, being a relatively small one, doesn't affect the radar altimeter as much as would be expected. So I choose to leave the radar altitude hold on rather than switching into barometric altitude hold and the effect is, well, neg negligible as can be seen as I fly over the town. Though in this Caucasus region that is currently in DCS, some of the cities can be quite large, so barometric altitude hold is a wise choice any time you're going to be entering a city, but as we can see, the highest building is roughly about the height of my air aircraft. And luckily I have a little area I can snake through the town without any obstacles affecting my altitude too much. So the altitude stabilizer can quite easily cope with the changes around my aircraft. With that, I hope this helps some of you understand how the altitude hold stabilizer works in the Camo 50 and how the collective brake interacts with it. If you have any more requests for videos for the Camo 50, feel free to leave them in the comments below.